Hi guys. Today we are going to talk about DID facts and TikTok media bullying. And as you will see, my eyes will be going down because I'm reading off of some research and some of my own writing. Um, I will give you, be giving you some displays of videos that um, need to be brought to awareness. So here we go. Whom is the victim and whom is the bully? These are questions we must ask ourselves when watching these videos on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, and other open apps that are open to the public. The first thing we have to ask and openly question is, do these people displaying this behavior and bullying even have a disorder before being or connecting on those media apps? Is their family and friends aware of their disorder or is it just on media that it seems to be noticed? Why do most have rooms even made just for videoing or displaying the disorder? Is this something they do daily? Is their mental health care professional aware of their actions on these public sites? Why do they use these apps to even make godly and ungodly fictives to show on camera when real fictives or alters that are suffering are unaware of the here and now? How are they aware of the camera even while portraying switches. This is where me, as a sufferer of DID, I'm not afraid to discuss these issues or answer them openly in a public setting. I am not afraid to say, yes, I have school records dating back to third grade of me being bullied and a bit odd and out of place. I have records showing my struggles with health issues in my teen years and people to verify my mood changes at that time because at the time I didn't have, no, I had DID. I have family and friends telling me stories of what they witnessed leading to the abuse and the switches that took place at that point in my life. I have had 25 jobs and statements to go with them jobs claiming the reason I was fired due to various things that showed a dissociative disorder openly leading to me being put on disability. Over time, before I even had any media outlets, I was struggling and fighting with this disorder. I was not only hurt sexually, but physically throughout my whole childhood and into my young adult life. I have scars on my body from abusers and from being abuse abusive to myself. I have had some reconstruction surgery on my private areas or in places my body has been worn down due to being in a hypoarousal state and switching from DID for so long. I have had many assessments over the years from doctors, therapists, psychologists, and even neurology. So why doesn't anybody on these apps with big numbers seem to struggle with these ailments off camera or even on camera? Why do they not speak openly about their struggles being at the doctors or everyday life? Most people with mental illnesses want to be normal and feel shame when they cannot portray themselves as normal. But bullies, on the other hand, want to be noticed and verified as much as possible. They don't care whom they hurt in their wake. They want to seem beautiful and unique. So to gain attention and validation by portraying unnormal behavior with bullying and using a victim's role, they gain the power they didn't have as a non-victim. Research shows on psychology today that most bullies, excluding those who not previously been victims of bullying themselves, do not usually suffer from mental or emotional problems. In their mind, they are behaving rationally. They have weighed the costs and benefits of bullying and have determined that the rewards outweigh the risks, especially on social media. They find by bullying online, there is no one who can stop their behavior with consequences as easily. But let's add a twist, shall we? If they claim to have a mental disorder, they are not only victims, but are able to gain sympathy from many other people whom don't know their backgrounds or even of 
the knowledge of the disorder itself. With more followers and believers, the bully not only gains power, but also gains those willing to fight the battle of for them while they stick to claiming a victim role. When someone deems them as invalid, even with the facts behind the claim, they will still gain sympathy and understanding. This not only shows the bully as innocent, but even more will follow this bully instead. You know why? Because they too don't want to be bullied themselves. Even though there should be consequences to their behavior, they rule over others with the power of followers and validators. Now, I'm going to give you a prime example of those displaying this behavior. All right. Now keep in mind, we don't have the knowledge of knowing they have the disorder or not, but the public, and I say public display of their actions will show you as a viewer that they do not want to answer questions that are not in any form attacking them or threatening them. They basically want you to see how powerful they really are. And here's the display of that. Somebody's fishing for upset. Somebody's intending to hurt. Huh. Funny is Matt look don't give a darn. Now it's time to go cry like when they were born. Because somebody else's physical, mental, whatever does not need to be addressed with a blow on. The fuck are you thinking is hitting on me? Thank you, let that happen again. Stop joking about this serious disorder. It's not funny. It's very- I'm silly. I'm a funny guy. I'm hilarious because of the trauma. <laughs> Let me be. If you were just going to throw fellow disabled people under the bus, I hope the bus backs over you. You don't get to say, oh, don't drag me into this because you are making this your personality. No, they're establishing boundaries and talking about their life. And FYI, dissociative identity disorder does kind of impact all aspects of our life and personality so now a victim with smaller followers may call out such a behavior they find inappropriate they may know or show a mental health care professional that understands that this doesn't meet the standard guidelines of that mental illness they may even do the research to understand that this doesn't meet the mental illness guidelines. But because of wanting to be accepted, that person may be forced to follow them unwillingly after being bullied to believe something else. Even if it doesn't meet the guidelines of what the disorder or mental illness really is. Why? because they don't want to feel invalidated or hated. My own personal experience on TikTok and how people are treated on this app is not only viewed to me as dangerous to mental health, but also can cause more symptoms or behavior that doesn't seem to meet part of the criteria for the disorder itself. Over the years, I've learned to watch and observe many things in my life to not only protect me, but those I care about as well, whom also suffer. Victims of bullying tend to be those whom stand out from a crowd, whether in a positive way or negative. Victims are often noticed by their need to shy away and to stick to their studies. They don't wish to follow the herd like others usually do and are drawn to those whom will show kindness to their needs. They are known to be extremely intelligent due to their past abuse and have exceptional surviving skills. They know how to overcome hardships. Many victims also over time have ailing disabilities 
that may stand out to a bully. Hence, they may not like their face. They may not like how they look. And they may not like their scars. ETC. Leaving this person helpless and alone. Now, another issue I want to bring awareness to is that not only is people with real mental illnesses becoming more aware of this type of bullying, um, so is the news. And I'm going to give you a clip and a link to watch this. Important story for parents to hear. Rise in teens on TikTok self-diagnosing themselves with rare mental health disorders, in most cases that they don't have, after watching videos on the social platform. Why do I stand against irrational and immoral behavior of DID being displayed publicly on these apps? I'm going to give you the answer to that. Displaying behavior publicly that is victimizing others should have consequences. Just the same as if when you were in school and you were little, there should be consequences. Because of fear, many are afraid to stand against this stigma, which not only slows the healing process down for those who really do suffer from ailments, but it can lead to unhealthy coping mechanisms as well. It can interfere with one's own therapy and keep those suffering from it in a chaotic phase. Even self-diagnosis may be claimed a valid thing today on these media apps, such as TikTok, but is it safe? Let's think hypo hypothetically here. Okay. What if that person is suffering from a delusion of having the disorder when they really don't and detour from the assessments to verify just that. Another example, a beautiful mind. He's seen things he thought he had, he thought he was doing, and it was a delusion. Same thing here. Person may claim to have DID, claim self-diagnosis, and claim to know the symptoms, but could it be a delusion? I've learned over the years of intense therapy and research that I don't need anybody's validations or followers. I feel the need to stand for the disorder itself. I stand for the disorder itself. I fight for the disorder itself. This disorder deserves to be understood and shown respect. These bullies are the reason the disorder itself is being invalidated. I find that what I do may be a hard job and it may lead to people bullying me or harassing me, but in the end, because of my will to not attack their own personal pages by writing on them or personal space unlike what they've done to mine um, shows their true colors you know I don't personally attack people's families or friends or find ways to threaten them I don't do that I just show the immoral display of what they're doing DID is like any mental illness and deserves respect. I stand strong and only show those whom seem to find an arousal in attacking or bullying others for asking honest and understandable questions. This to me needs to be noticed and understood. Lying is another issue I have. Children or adults should be taught to be honest and respectful. Lying to display that they are more valid or to gain sympathy is not a route I take lightly. How are normal people supposed to understand this rare disorder if the people displaying it can't even keep the facts of the disorder straight? So that is all I have on the subject of that. And I will continue to help those who are willing to walk and not be carried. I will continue to heal. I will continue to learn and support those who show the disorder the respect it deserves. Love y'all. Bye.